Should you hold Bitcoin in your portfolio right now? This week we released the Milk Road Pro Portfolio. This is our recommended portfolio for you to capitalize on the next six to 12 months of this bull cycle. In it, we hold 12 assets and Bitcoin is not one of them. This caused quite the stir, confusion, anger, all the emotions. So we wanted to explain in today's episode why we're not holding Bitcoin in our portfolio right now. What is the Milk Road Poor portfolio? How can it help you? We're going to give some price predictions for Bitcoin, ETH, and Solana, and our long-term strategy for this cycle and beyond, answering the question, will we ever hold Bitcoin again? GM, good morning. Welcome to Milk Road Radio, the easiest path to get smarter about crypto. I'm Jay Hamilton, joined by Kyle Reedhead, and we believe that on-chain is the next online, and we're here to help you capitalize. All right, Kai, on Thursday, we launched the Milk Road Pro portfolio, and people were confused. One person said, no BTC in the Milk Road portfolio? Eyeball emoji. Show some love by adding some Bitcoin to the portfolio, another said. This caused quite the stir. Before we explain why, Kyle, can you first give us some background? What is the Milk Road Pro portfolio and what's the objective? Why did we want to provide this to our listeners and our readers? Yeah, absolutely. So this was including Bitcoin or not including was obviously a hot topic for us on the pro team. And the goal of this portfolio is one, to limit risk, but also to outperform the sort of like typical dollar cost average into Bitcoin, ETH, you know, whatever, the, the majors kind of thing. So we want this to be a, it is a long-term portfolio. So we, you know, crypto is currently sitting at like 2.5 trillion. We see it going to hundred trillion over the next 10 years. And this portfolio is to show our pro members how to capitalize on that in the best way that we think possible while also limiting your risk. So it is a, is a long-term, you know, five to 10 year portfolio. However, it is active. So it is actively managed, meaning we are moving assets in and out not on a daily basis, like day traders, we definitely don't do that. I know most of our listeners uh, are not that either, but more around the cycles. So crypto has had these sort of four-year cycles in history. And our idea here is we move our assets according to where we're at in the cycle. And so typically they've been four years. I don't know that they're always going to be that way. But the goal is basically just to give you guys kind of the, the ideal strategy that we have is when you're in a bear market, as you come out of the bear market, typically Bitcoin dominates, right? This is when Bitcoin dominance actually goes up big time. That's when you want to be heavier in Bitcoin. And then maybe some of the other things that were really sold off during the bear market. We believe we are now out of that stage. So there was the Bitcoin dominance that, that really did well over the last year, year and a half, whatever. We're past that now. We believe we are in the second half of this bull market, which is where you go a little bit more risk on. And at this point, we think Bitcoin still does well. We just don't think it outperforms. And so we think there are better assets, which we'll talk about there. And then when you get to near the top of the cycle and the, you know, on your way down to the bear market, that's when you want to change, get out of most of the assets, maybe stay in some majors, maybe stay in some stable coins and basically repeat. And you follow these cycles over the next five to 10 years. And the goal is if you can achieve exceptional results year over year, those will compound and compound. And that is how you develop uh, generational wealth. It's not trying to get your thousand X today and hoping that you just like gamble and, and make it like how many people do you know that got rich in Vegas? None. I don't know. Any. Uh, I only know people that come back from Vegas a lot less rich than they were when they went there. And yet that's what people do when they come into crypto. And so every day we get asked, should I buy this asset? Should I not buy this asset? And we're like, you know what? Let's just create a portfolio. That's going to show people exactly what we're doing here. We could have just showed our milk road treasury, but it's a bit boring. We do buy Bitcoin at Milk Road. We do. We buy Bitcoin, we buy ETH, we buy Sol. We just dollar cost average with our profit every single month. But you can outperform that. But Milk Road is not an investment firm. We're focused on creating amazing content uh, and building a media business. We're not focused on investing and being an investment firm. So the strategy that we have in this pro portfolio is very different than you know, what we do at our, our Milk Road company, where we're just sort of like not thinking about it. We're just not active. We're just buying on a daily basis or on a monthly basis. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is, that it really comes down to a matter of perspective and your objectives and where you're at with risk. And the Milk Road Pro Portfolio's objective is to give you a little bit more risk than the standard dollar cost average strategy, 
not so much risk as the casino, the crypto casino might be in meme <laughs> coins, something uh, more in the There's a meme coin in the portfolio. There's a meme coin in the portfolio. That's, yeah, I, you could argue that it's maybe it's, we're looking for the a, highest risk reward. It's a bit more than a meme coin. <laughs> at this point. We're looking for the highest risk reward assets in a giving time. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. So just to ask the one question to be very clear here, the milkman does not dislike BTC. Doesn't hate on no. BTC. Absolutely not. I mean, we, look, we talk about Bitcoin every single day in our newsletter. We're And we send that out to 300,000 people every single day. We're probably one of the biggest advocates of Bitcoin. We've been holding Bitcoin. The interesting thing was when we launched this portfolio this month, we were like, okay, well, let's look. We actually have about what we think is 12 to 18 months left in this cycle. And we're like, what do you think is the best strategy? Is it holding Bitcoin? And as we discussed and got further along, we're like, no, not right now. If we launched this last year, 100%, we would have had some Bitcoin in there. Without a doubt, there is probably another time at some point where we will add Bitcoin back in to this portfolio. Who knows? You never know what's going to happen in the future. But we think right now it is not the best risk reward and there are much better options. Before we go into the other options, and we're not going to go to all of them, you're going to have to either become a pro member or if you already are a pro member, you're going to go check out the portfolio itself to see the actual breakdown. But let's talk about Bitcoin and where Bitcoin is at right now. I'm sure that most of our listeners have a good percentage of their portfolio in Bitcoin. So for all those they're in that situation. They're sitting there and they're saying, what do you mean, Kyle? I shouldn't be holding <laughs> Bitcoin. Why? To be fair, I don't, I'm not recommending anyone to not hold Bitcoin. You do as you feel best, okay? Bitcoin, I'm not saying it's a bad asset. I'm not saying it's not going to do well. I think it's going to do very well. And we'll talk about some predictions later on in the show. I think Bitcoin does well over the next 12 to 18 months. So don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm calling that it goes down, you know, for the rest mm. of the cycle. Definitely not. Again, I just think, Bitcoin has had its moment and it's time to move down the risk curve. Bitcoin had its moment in, let's say, Q4, 2023 and Q1, 2024, all around the ETF and the hype of that coming and then it actually launching. And so it did well. Its ecosystem did well. The L2s on Bitcoin got a lot of hype, like Stacks, you know, Ordinals, Runes launched, and it was the hot topic of conversation. And so there was a lot of people that were even like, oh, Bitcoin, this is a Bitcoin only cycle. ETH's going to skip this cycle and whatever. And I just think... That narrative has now been turned off, mainly because of the ETH ETF coming in is part of it. But also, it's not even just about that. It's just historically, this is how the cycles work. Bitcoin always does well in the beginning. It sort of pulls us out of the bear market. And then the rest sort of lags behind. If you look at the cycle, last cycle, where we had the 2020, 2021 bull market, ETH and most of the alts didn't do anything until the beginning of 2021. So, you know, after COVID, obviously everything dumped, everything ripped after that. Okay. But then in the summer of 2020, it was like nothing really happened. And then all of a sudden, Sailor bought a bunch of Bitcoin, about like $600 million worth. And Bitcoin just ripped for all of Q3 and Q4. But ETH lagged. It did not do as well. And then all of a sudden, about, I think it was January, maybe the very end of December in 2020, ETH just went on absolute tear. And it like forexed in, I don't know, like a month or two months. It was actually absolutely insane. And then retail came in and what did mainstream do? They came in and they played on the casino. They played around on Ethereum, NFTs went nuts and Ethereum was in the spotlight for all of 2021 and Bitcoin, sure, it went up, but it was like not much. And the same thing happened the cycle before that in 2016, 2017. And so people continue to, I think, kind of miss where we're at in the cycles right now. I think the same thing's happening here. Right now we're in year 2020, okay? If we're looking back at the last cycle, and I think we're about to go more risk on and we'll be in the 2021 moment in the near future. And so that's why I think Bitcoin dominance has sort of peaked. And again, it still does well. I just think there's many other assets that do much better for the rest of this cycle. Okay, before we get to some price predictions here, Kai, you made a call in our Discord in December of 23, December 22nd to be exact, <laughs> about the ETH versus Bitcoin ratio and feeling like it was at the bottom at that point, actually ended up not being the bottom. The bottom hit very recently and yeah. no surprise with ETH ETF, things have changed. Zooming out now, how do you feel about that call and where do you think we sit with that ratio? So the ETH BTC at that time was 0 0.053. It's currently at 0 0.056. So like I'm up on that call right now. So I, I feel completely fine. The thing is like, 
again, I'm not a day trader. I don't try to think that I can ever call the top of anything, the bottom of anything. That's not my expertise. I don't know if that's anyone's expertise, even though a lot of people do try to call that. I more just look at trends and historical cycles. And I think over a longer time frame. And so, yeah, was I, did I not call the bottom? No, but I'm a few months off. I don't really care. It didn't matter to me, right? Again, I'm now up on that trade. So if you moved all of your Bitcoin out when I said that and put it into ETH, you are up. Great, right? Even now, Bitcoin dominance, I'm saying, is going to go down. You guys saw the chart with the, the red arrow that's going to go down there. Does that happen today? No, maybe Bitcoin has its moment again for another week or two weeks or even another month. I, I don't know. I also don't really care. I'm looking over the next 12 to 18 months. I'm trying to play the rest of this cycle. And so my positioning is not to keep trading back and forth. That's a lot of taxes you got to pay if you do that. Uh, and you probably are going to get wrecked when you do that. I'm, again, not looking over the results over the next week or two weeks or month, which I know most people listening to this are going to go, Kyle, you were wrong, you know, seven days from now because maybe Bitcoin is higher or something. I don't care. That's not what I'm looking at. I'm trying to play the cycle here. Okay, let's go to some price predictions here. Kai, what are your thoughts on price predictions? And if you could give us some time frame around these price predictions as well. I know you don't, as you said, you don't know exactly when the tops are. That's not possible. But give us some rough idea for BTC, ETH, and Seoul. So I think Bitcoin probably reaches somewhere around 150 to 200K max. I don't think it goes much higher than that. There's a lot of crazy calls out there. I could see it not even reaching 150K, to be honest. But if it reached 150, 200K, it's like a little less than 3, 3X this cycle. So, I mean, still great. If that's all you want to do because you want to keep it easy, there is nothing wrong with a 3X in the next 12 to 18 months. And that's actually incredible. So I think that's my guess for Bitcoin. And again, I think that happens in the next 12 to, to 18 months or so. Um, I also think, by the way, just on those numbers, I think when we re reach 100K Bitcoin, that is when we really get into the 2021 days where things get crazy and whatever, you know, NFTs or meme coins or whatever decides to go nuts. It's just going to be, that's when it's wild. And every Uber you take, they're talking about it and your parents are asking about it and so on and so forth. I think it, we got to wait until Bitcoin hits hundred K. I think ETH does somewhere around 12 to maybe 15 to maybe 20 K. I think it has potential. I think ETH has still been lagging, hasn't had its big moment yet. And when it has that big move, it moves fast. ETH is going to become a trillion dollar asset this cycle. And so if we're looking from somewhere between 12 and, and 20K, I know it's a pretty big range, but that's about a four to five X. And again, I think the risk is very much the same as Bitcoin, close to the same, which is why I think you have a much better risk reward on ETH than you do Bitcoin. And at that point, it's just like, why even hold Bitcoin when you could just hold ETH? And that's sort of our mindset here around not holding Bitcoin in the portfolio in this very moment is, well, you can get a four or five X and really, I mean, they both have an ETF at this point. They both have adoption. They're both kind of in the limelight. You know, BlackRock is building on Ethereum. And then I guess the other side to it, by the way, just to, to point back to this debate between Bitcoin and ETH, you also have this Mt. Gox, Gox stuff that came out the other day and mm -hmm. it was a nothing burger, of course, but there was a lot of rumors saying, hey, this distribution of about $10 billion of Bitcoin from Mt. Gox is going to go out at some point this year. If that happens, that's a lot of sell pressure that Bitcoin has that ETH and others don't get. Just a lot of things, signs point to ETH or Sol doing much better with not that much more risk, I think, in my opinion. And then Sol. Sol is really tracking, I think, maybe what Ethereum did last cycle. Sol hit about $250, I think it was. Maybe it was closer to $300 last cycle. I think it reaches about 1000 It might even go above 1000 Sol, I, I still think, is probably the best investment you can get uh, in terms of risk reward in this cycle right now, I mean, we just talked yesterday about PayPal, you know, building on Solana. It is a much smaller market cap than both ETH and Bitcoin. You know, it's like one fifth of ETH and I don't even know what it would be of Bitcoin. So it's a tiny asset that is making big time moves. And, and so I just think that asset's going to do extremely well in the next 12 to 18 months. So at least a thousand, maybe goes a little bit higher. So that's like a six X plus. Now, to be clear, it doesn't just sit around at a thousand, right? When ETH hit 5,000 last cycle or Bitcoin hit 69K last cycle, it was for like a day, not even. It was probably for like an hour, right? So you got to understand, you don't just sit and wait for Seoul to hit a thousand dollars and sell at a thousand dollars. That's not how you're going to time this top because it's going to be so damn fast that you won't even realize it, right? So don't, when people give price predictions, it doesn't mean it's just going to sit there and just hang out there for a while. You got to remember this stuff moves really fast at the end of the cycle. And so when it touches a thousand or maybe it's, you know, 1200 or whatever, 
it's going to be quick. And if you're not ready, you're probably not going to hit that. So don't try to like time it at these numbers. These are just my expectations of where it touches at some point in the cycle. How do you think about timing and exiting then as you bring up that question? It is something that I think it's so it, it ties back into your thoughts in the Milk Road Pro Team's thoughts around the strategy of how you manage your portfolio. Yeah. So right now I feel like we're going into the risk on world, right? And so this is where you want to be a lot more, you know, you want to have your ETH and your soul and then a bunch of alts. I think you said at the beginning, we have about 12 assets. When we start to get to the top of the cycle, which as I said, this is when your Uber is asking you about I don't know, XRP or whatever, and your mom is asking, should she buy Bitcoin? These are the moments where you don't want to keep buying. This is the moments where you want to start to dollar cost average out, right? And I don't mean like, okay, ETH hits 12K or 15K or whatever. You're like, okay, this might be the top. You just sell it all. You're not going to get that right. You're going to sell it too early for sure. And then you're also going to sell it too late. And so the key or what I think we should do and what we've recommended in our portfolio is just you dollar cost average out. We recommend you dollar cost average in, you dollar cost average out as you start to feel that we're reaching the top. You're not going to get it right, but maybe you get it within three months. And so if you take out some profits over three months and then you also end up taking out profits while it's on its way down too, that's great. Your goal is to just try to get to that top, somewhere around the mountain range, right? The peak of that mountain. And you want to sell around as it's going up and then as it's going back down, somewhere near the top. And you want to move out of those risky assets. You don't want to be holding altcoins in, the, in this bear market. Definitely, definitely not. You might not even want to be holding ETH and SOL, right? Maybe ETH at this point, it did perform really well last bear market. But maybe you want to hold just Bitcoin. Maybe you want to hold Bitcoin and ETH. But to be honest, you want to be holding a lot more stable coins or get right out and get into fiat than anything. And so for me, it's dollar cost average out. Definitely get out of the altcoins and just hold majors at that point. What if the ETH ETF wasn't approved? Would that have changed what the Milk Road Pro team decided for the portfolio? That's a really good question. So the ETH ETF getting approved when it did definitely was like our final like nail in the coffin. Okay, the Bitcoin dominance is done here. And so at least it changed the time frame probably because I still think the ETH ETF was going to get approved at some point this year regardless. And so still thought ETH and SOL would outperform regardless. Did I think this is the top for Bitcoin dominance? Mm, maybe not. Maybe it was a couple months down the road if ETH ETF didn't get approved. The real reason I think Bitcoin dominance is, is peaking is not necessarily because the ETH ETF, it's more the macro environment. I think typically Bitcoin dominance tops out when interest rates get lowered or liquidity really starts to pick up. And I think we are reaching that inflection point in the next few months. I think we'll see rates come down and we'll start to see liquidity really start to pick up. And so that's really my signal for Bitcoin dominance peaking. I think that just we moved up the time frame of dominance peaking because of the ETH ETF. So I don't know. We would have launched this month. Maybe there would have been some Bitcoin in there, but maybe a smaller percentage. Hard to say. Hard to say. Because you know what? The ETH ETF did get approved. So let's just let's focus on that and, and make our portfolio around that. Kai, thanks so much for breaking this all down for us and making sure that everybody understands that the milkman doesn't hate Bitcoin. He's just not holding it right now. <laughs> And it doesn't mean he's never going to hold it again. Actually, very likely that he will hold it again. If you guys want to know what these other assets are, we've been saying there's 12 assets in this portfolio, but we've only talked about well, we three assets today. And Bitcoin's not even in there. So we've really only talked about two, ETH and Soul, which are in there. But if you want to know what the other 10 are, you're going to have to sign up for Milk Road Pro, which you can do in the show link. There's a link right there. Make sure you click it now and go pro so you can get access to the portfolio and you can see what we are looking at and having our eyeballs on. Not only that, there's lots of information in there that breaks down our hypothesis on each one of these assets. And we will be keeping this up to date so you know whether we think each asset is in buy mode or whether we're starting to move into sell mode throughout this cycle. We also would love to know how much of your portfolio is in Bitcoin. Let us know. There's a poll question. If you're listening on Spotify, how much of your portfolio is in Bitcoin? If you're listening on YouTube, tell us, are you holding 0 to 25%? Are you holding 25 to 50%? Are you 50 to 75%? Or are you 75 to 100% Bitcoin? We want to know where you fall because we're curious what you guys have got in your portfolio. Because really, in the end, we're all here to support you and we need to understand what you guys are up to. Kai, 
Any final thoughts before we let you go? No, I just want to answer the poll question, which is uh, 0%. <laughs> is that your personal portfolio or the uh, Milk Road Pro portfolio? I actually, I have a little bit of Bitcoin in my personal just because I've had it since I first got into crypto in like 2019 and just have never, it's just on a hardware wallet. I don't even have it with me in Nicaragua right now. And so I couldn't even sell it if I tried. So just, it just sits there and we'll be there for probably forever. I don't know. Going to give it to your kids one day. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us today, Kai. In case you missed it, here's what's happened in news recently. First up, Trump was found guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records by a New York jury. This is the first time a U.S. president has been convicted of a felony. Immediately upon the verdict, the Trump token on ETH, which is widely thought to be the Trump token, although there's many on many different chains, it fell nearly 50%, and then it bounced back up an hour later, not even pretty quickly, and ended the day up 10%. Political coins are going to be on a wild ride. Lots of volatility to come over the next six months with the election, and we'll make sure we keep you guys informed. June is shaping up to be a wild ride for token unlocks. Over 875 million in token unlocks from over 30 blockchain projects is set to hit the market, including Aptos, Arbitrum, Starknet, Sui, and more. So we can expect some volatility coming over the summer months, but we'll make sure we keep you informed on what you need to know about token unlocks on your tokens that you are following. And finally, the Japanese exchange DMM has fallen victim to a crafty hacker who managed to swipe a staggering 300 million worth of Bitcoin. The hack occurred on May 30th when the attackers somehow got their hands on DMM's private keys. Oh, DMM has assured its users that their deposits will be fully guaranteed, and they're already working on securing an equivalent amount of BTC to make everyone whole again. Always hate to see hacks in the space, so we hope this one gets sorted out. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening in, everybody. Hope you're having an awesome Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to Milk Road Radio, the easiest path to get smarter about crypto. If you like this episode, share it, hit subscribe, or follow so you don't miss out on the next one. There's also a link in the description to our free five-minute daily newsletter where we simplify crypto for you while making you laugh. And if you're willing to step up your crypto investing game, then we'll leave a link to Milk Road Pro as well, your number one resource to help you invest successfully in crypto. One final note, this podcast is for educational purposes is only nothing we say is financial advice. Crypto is risky, so you should never invest more than you're willing to lose. Thank you, friends, and we'll see you in the next one.